I think it's fair to say that all internet-facing web applications need to be secured with HTTPS. That means deploying a digital certificate issued by a trusted certificate authority. Indeed, you may need to deploy certificates at several points in order to maintain SSL right through the environment. Today, I'm going to go through the process of deploying a trusted certificate to an OCI load balancer, which more often than not will be the entry point to your website. There are several prerequisites for deploying a certificate. First, we need a domain name registered with the DNS. Well, here it is. nslockup jw-cert-demo.skillbuilders.com. That's my domain name. It is registered with DNS as being mapped to address 129.80.217.11. Second, we need a load balancer configured with listeners and backend sets to accept calls to that host name. This is it, hosting customers LB, and it is indeed listening on 129.80.217.11. Remember, that is the address to which my host name is mapped. The load balancer is going to route requests through to a little micro instance named cert demo that I have here. That's the instance. And if you look at the processes, we'll see that my Apache HTTPD server is running. You can, in fact, contact the HTTP server directly. Uh, a regular user, of course, would never have any, would never have permissions to do this. But I can, and I can go straight to its address, and it's working. Back comes my Hello World index HTML document. But I get this warning that it isn't secure. Why am I getting that warning? Well, if we look at the certificates, the certificate isn't valid. Why isn't it valid? It's issued to cert demo and it's issued by cert demo. This is just a self-signed certificate. That will be fine, however, because the outside world will never see it. What I need to present to the outside world is a real certificate. I've got one prepared here. There is the certificate itself. There's the private key. And there's the chain that takes us back to the trusted issuer, which for this demonstration is Let's Encrypt. Lastly, I need the OCI command line interface available. And it is now installed. I need that because while you can do this sort of work of deploying certificates through the OCI console, through the GUI, you will need to use the CLI so that operations can be properly scripted. We already have tutorials for installing Apache, obtaining Let's Encrypt certificates, and configuring the OCI CLI. What I'm going to demonstrate today is the final step of getting the certificates into the load balancer. A load balancer usually does a lot more than load balancing. In this case, specifically, I'm going to use it to manage the SSL handshake with the users. Right now, the load balancer will accept requests 
for my registered host name. We can see that here. If I browse to jwcertdemoskillbuilders.com, it's worked, but it's given me a warning. I shall proceed. Why have I got the warning? Because the certificate is not valid. Why is the certificate not valid? Well, it's a genuine certificate issued by Let's Encrypt, expires in September, but the name is incorrect. The name OCI Ashburn Hosting LB SkillBuilders.com is not the name I requested here. This, by the way, is just a general purpose name that we use for all sorts of testing. What I need to do is get the real certificate up there into the load balancer. And that is the certificate that I obtained earlier. It is currently stored on my compute instance. So let's get the real certificate up there using the OCI command line interface. The first command I'm going to run is going to create the certificate within OCI. If you look at the certificates there at the moment for my load balancer, the certificates available, load balancer man certificates, are these. There's the OCI Ashburn Hosting LB certificate that's being sent out at the moment. I need to add the certificates for JW Cert Demo to this list. That's what this command here is going to do. OCI LB certificate create. I'm going to create a certificate in the load balancer. The arguments, which load balancer? That one. There's its OSID. I'm going to call the certificate JW Cert Demo. And these are the three files I'm going to upload. So from my slash root slash certificate directory, I'll upload the certificate chain, the private key, and the certificate itself. That will take a few seconds to do. What it's going to be doing is creating a task. It will be creating a, draw, a work request, which we should see being created here. Work request created. And once it gets accepted, it's been accepted, it's in progress. The certificate is being created as I speak. And when it is done, succeeded, we should be able to see it in the GUI. And certificates, low balancer man certificates. There it is, JW Cert Demo skillbuilders.com. I can now proceed to the final stage, which is to apply the certificate to the appropriate HTTPS listener. And that we do with the command I have prepared here. OCI LB listener update. I'm going to update a load balancer's listeners. And what am I going to do? Well, default backend set name, JWBS HTTPS. That's the backend set, which includes my micro instance. That's the name of the listener that I'm going to update, JWHTTPS. And that's the load balancer within which I'm working. But then we get to the clever stuff. Port 443, protocol HTTP, host name, and certificate name. What these directives or arguments would do is tell the load balancer that whenever it receives a request for this host name on port 443, return that certificate. So once this is finished, it will route all requests for the host name 
to the appropriate backend server and it will return the certificate appropriate to the host name. It's created the work request, which is running right now. Once it has completed, we should be able to go here and simply refresh the page. Remember originally we were getting warnings because that was the certificate being returned that didn't match my host name. If I now refresh, everything's cool. And if we look at the certificate, just to confirm it, that's now the certificate I'm getting back. So the certificate is valid and it matches the host name in my URL. And that's what we want to see. To conclude, usually you will need SSL at all levels. And since SSL is a point to point protocol, that means deploying certificates at all levels. Your own dummy certificates or self-signed certificates will do for internal resources, but the internet facing endpoint needs a proper valid certificate issued by a trusted certificate authority that matches the host name your end users are using. Where is your internet facing endpoint? Often a load balancer. Though, of course, it could be a level or two further out in a more complex environment. Deploying the certificates needs to be automated. For instance, let's encrypt certificates have to be renewed every three months. You wouldn't want to do that manually. You have to do that with scheduled jobs. And that means managing your certificates with the OCI CLI facility as demonstrated. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.